Hello friends and viewers, welcome back to the channel, Heir of Carthage here, and yes, there has been a lot of changes to Warhammer 3 recently, so Shadows of Change got a big update with a lot of new content, so if you purchased the DLC, you got a whole bunch of content added to the game, which is always exciting. I'm glad to see that CA takes it seriously, the situation we were in. It's going to take some time, and we'll see what happens over time, but to me, this is a positive step in the right direction. And it has me a lot more hopeful about the future of Total War at the moment than I was two or three months ago. So I'm glad to see it, and I wanted to replay Zarina Katarin for a couple of reasons. Number one, I absolutely love Kislev, and Kislev had some changes. But Zarina Katarin can now finally get the sled that she deserves. And so this whole campaign is going to be Zarina Katarin's slay. Except that's going to be a little bit of a play on words, right? Slay and slay. So for those of you not first... English speakers, you'll have to look that one up, but essentially, you know, we're going to be doing a lot of slaying, so it should be a lot of fun. I've got the settings on very hard, very hard. These are my favorite settings that I've found, at least right now. I love the aggressiveness, even though sometimes I get upset at the cheatiness, it's okay, but I love the aggressiveness of the campaign difficulty. The battle difficulty I like on very hard because the AI makes slightly better decisions when it comes to, like, dodging your artillery fire and stuff like that. Um, but uh, what I love is being able to dial back the stats modifier. So the AI doesn't get the ridiculous stat buffs from very hard. Um, and so to me, this has been become my favorite campaign settings. I, I don't know if you all have your own. You can go for it or play the way that you like. But this is what I have come to enjoy. But yeah, so I think what we want to do um, is we're, obviously our first goal is to get Zarina Katarin's slay and then to go on a slay ride, S-L-A-Y, at that point and slay as many enemies as we can. <laughs> with Zarina Katarin, almost kind of like the uh, the evil Santa from Futurama. Um, so I, I think that's the way we're going to take this one. And I think along the way, we're going to have to also make use of the new lore of hags. Obviously, that's something we want to visit. We need to get the Golden Knight in on the sleigh ride. And we'll have to come up with some different like army configurations that we can test around with Zarina Katarin. So, you know, maybe different variants of a sleigh ride. So I'd love for you all to get down in the comments early and tell me what kind of fun sleigh armies should we put together. So like, for instance, maybe we have Zarina Katarin in the sleigh, and then we get a whole bunch of bear sleds and like Streltsy, and so we have like a gun sleigh thing going on, right? Or maybe we have like a bow themed one, like with more archers and stuff like that. But again, um, spiders, bears, you know, whatever you all want to throw in. I'm curious to see what you all come up with. So let me know some things that you think would be fun for this. Um, oh, for those of you who are going to be asking, what about the Belagar Iron Hammer campaign? It was basically finished. We've been finished. I mean, the only thing that was left to do was to kill a few vampires. Um, I may play some of that in my spare time. Now, this is on the regular Immortal Empires map. The Belagar campaign was on the Chaos Robbie's Old World map. And we will do another campaign on the Old World map eventually because I really like it. But I figured this one would be fun to just kind of step back into um, the standard Immortal Sorry, Empires map. All right, so let's get things started. We have some enemies of Kislev uh, off to the south and east here that we need to defeat probably immediately. We're already taking some attrition. It is probably because of, yeah, chaos corruption is high. So let us... We c oh, yes, sweet. We have Kislevite warriors already that we can recruit. These guys are going to be a game changer early game. <clears throat> what I used to like to do with Kislev was just get a whole bunch of Kassar spears. Um, because they were, you know, slightly decent at, like, holding off, like, a charge or something. Um, but now these guys are going to be much better at that. <clears throat> and they'll actually have uh, significantly improved um, melee defense, as well as the armor-piercing uh, attack there, which is going to be nice. So we can kind of do a mixture. I think early, our ideal world would be uh, stacking up a lot of Kassar spears and Kislevite warriors uh, until we can stack up something more dangerous. Um, but I think those are going to be kind of our early game doom stacks. Um, let's go ahead and knock these guys out. Right, here we are on the battle map. I've got my armies moving forward, and right now um, we're still ice block Zarina Katarin, of course, because we have to earn our way up to the sleigh to begin our sleigh ride. Um, I do love me some winged hussars. This is one thing I'd still love to see for Kislev, ultimately, and maybe, I, I mean, I've heard arguments from people who disagree with me, and that's totally fine. Like, you don't have to agree with me on this, but... I feel like Winged Lancers and Griffin Legion are just a pick that you would never make late in the game. 
Um, and I hate that. Like, I hate that there's no reason to use them. Um, I mean, winged hussars are pretty good early game against lightly armored stuff. The problem with Griffin Legion is, is they're kind of just a more heavily armored, improved version of the winged hussars, and they still aren't good against, like, armored targets late game. They can't take down monsters and stuff like that, so, like, I, I feel like... That's an unfortunate thing. Now, some people might say, well, Air, that's because they have the, the polar bear, or the, uh, the bear riders. Uh, and, and that's true. The bear riders kind of, uh, you know, fill in the, the thing that the Griffin Legion can't do. But again, it still leaves the Griffin Legion in kind of like this weird, semi-useless state that I'm not a big fan of. Um, so I, I would love to see something done about that, personally. I'm going to start targeting their missile units. Um, it's going to be my first thing. we got to watch these Norskin Ice Trolls. And we also need to watch out for the Marauder Chieftain. Um, we do have this thing that's going to slow everybody down, so let's go ahead and hit him with that. And that'll give my Armored Kassars. I'm going to put a charge into these Marauders because they won't be able to do much about it, and they're not graced. That will cause some pretty substantial damage, and then I'm going to pull back. And we are getting rid of those horsemen over here with our standard Kassars. I'm going to bring my cat in here to duel it with the, uh, the Ice Trolls. Frost Cat and Ice Trolls. Man, I love some Ice Guard. I like. I know that we just saw some messages from um, Games Workshop saying that the uh, Kiss Lemon Cafe won't be on the tabletop anytime soon. Some people made it seem like that that means that they'll never be. Uh, that's not actually the message that I got from that. To me, it looks like we probably will get them on tabletop, um, just not anytime soon, like they said. And so. I feel like that we probably will be seeing Kiss Levin Cafe in the tabletop, and I mean, I have a lot of work to do on my tabletop army still, which by the way, I'm going to try and bring some video updates on that soon on the Tomb King army that I'm painting. I'm just trying to get the right equipment to actually film some painting, because it's difficult with what I have. Um, but in any case, yeah, I I would be into a Kiss Lev army in a heartbeat. Like, these Ice Guard would make such cool tabletop models. Especially when I think about like how nice some of the Age of Sigmar models look. Like, I mean, you could do some really cool things with these models on tabletop, like all those icy colored things. I mean, the armor and different colors you could do on Kislev, the winged lancers. Like, there's so many cool models with Kislev that I would be all over if we could get them into tabletop. So, understand that they just launched the old world, and I'm assuming that Games Workshop probably has a lot of work that they want to get done before they even attempt to begin to like expand um, uh, different factions, but I look forward to it, and um, I'm hoping for the opportunity to to get to uh, try some Kislev out on the tabletop. But I guess first things first, I gotta get my Tomb Kings on the tabletop. All right, I'll see you all back on the campaign map. All right, so we're gonna get a little bit of um, loot here. We're gonna gain some devotion, of course, which is always good as Kislev. Um, we could gain further devotion, we could pick up a little extra cash. We can replenish our units, um, which I'm going to go ahead and do the unit replenishment. I like my army to be at full fighting strength. We cannot reach the enemy settlement in this turn, so what I'm actually going to do... And it kind of sucks because we're going to we're gonna take attrition one way or the other, I think. I'm going to go ahead and scoot back across the line. And the attrition stinks, but at least I can get in here and recruit a couple of new units. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. It looks like we gained a banner, the Griffin banner. So it's a leadership minus four. That might actually go really nicely on my wing to Sars the uh, next time we get into combat. Let's go take a look at Zarina Katarin real quick. We do have a skill point we can put in, and we're going to kind of plan things out a little bit here. The um, Ice Court Sled doesn't come until rank 23. In fact, we can get a Frost Worm before that, so we have a long ways to go uh, before we can, we can get to the Ice Court Sled, but that's going to be exciting. And if we look at the damage profile there, it's going to be very anti-infantry focused, which will be a lot of fun. That Frostworm is a cool mount too, so Zarina Katarin's got some neat options now. And that's very much more exciting than where she was at. I mean, the bear was cool, but like, I mean, this is nice to have some more options. So I, I think the first thing that I want to do, this Quartermaster skill is a favorite of mine because it reduces your army upkeep significantly. This is going to allow you to have more expensive units at a lower cost. We're going to be dealing with supply lines and stuff like that because I haven't turned any of that off in the mods. Um, and I think that I'm going to end that Renowned and Fear um, levels that up even further. So I, I'm going to focus, like sometimes I like to focus early and get the skills up on my units. And honestly, that's probably not a bad idea. Um, 
Firing Drills is a good one because it covers so many Kislevite units. Um, it gives them extra melee defense and reload time. Or do I just go for it and reduce the cost of my army? I think we just go for it and reduce the cost of the army. Um, if I was using... If I hadn't turned down the buffs on the AI, for instance, um, you might want to go down this route first and increase the combat capabilities of your forces to help overwhelm the buffs that the AI um, gets from that kind of stuff. Now, we do control Kislev, and we need to put some buildings in there. Um, the first thing I'm interested in is better defensive uh, structures, and then I also, I mean, you probably want growth early on, and that is certainly an option. But there's a couple of good options here. We get a lot of income um, from this stall building, um, and the income is pretty handy early on. We also do want the growth because we want to speed the growth of this, and it's going to stall my economy a little little earlier, but I have enough money at the moment to pick up some... I'm going to go ahead and put the growth in there to try and speed the growth of our, our settlement. Um, yeah, we should be good there. We have uh, the ability to put a... Let's see, corruption minus five. Well, Kislev's not struggling from the corruption as much as the surrounding province. So we got control and movement range reduction for enemy armies. That might be cool to catch enemy armies that are running around in there. We can get extra income. Local recruitment capacity is nice if we were in Kislev and recruiting there, which we aren't at the moment. So that one won't play as big of a role. I think what we'll do is probably just go ahead and put in the extra control for now so that we don't end up with rebellions. I hate the fact that we're going to be stuck with attrition here. But there's just not a whole lot I can do about it at the moment. Um, let's go take a look at our tech tree. And think about what we want to do early. We have magic with Zarina Katarin early. So this ice court thing, we don't necessarily have to fool with it. However, it might be a good idea to get that stuff done sometime soon so that we can, um, you know, be able to uh, be able to have that ready for second armies. Uh, there's a couple of good early techs here, though. Um, missile resistance for arch uh, horse archers. Well, actually, I wish that was for regular archers. Never mind. That one's not as uh, interesting to me. This is a good one right here. Extra melee defense for units is never a bad thing. Um, convalescence is good because you're going to replenish faster and grow faster. So, I mean, definitely some nice techs early. This one's good, too. Um, extra recruitment. Uh, lens crafters always makes me think we're going to the eye doctor. Uh, but in any case, let's go ahead and do... Let's let's do convalescence first. That little bit of growth is nice. Let's take Your advantage of that. And um, let's go ahead and end our turn here. Like I said, kind of sucks that we're going to take the attrition, but it's just kind of the position it starts us in here early, and I'm not terribly worried about it. We'll go capture that, that Norskin city. All right, we got to the end of our turn, and we've got this Refugees of War thing. I think this happens whenever a faction gets destroyed. Um, yeah, so with the faction being defeated. So this is a mod that I'm using, actually. It's the Recruit Defeated Legendary Lords. I don't think that this um, faction is going to have one. Um, and so, like, there's these different options that we get. Um, we can force them into a rival faction. We can kill the refugees, like... But I'm just going to hit accept. If there's anything good that comes from their faction, we'll get it. So I did that in order to, like, if Boris gets killed or if um, the, uh, oh, Kostalton gets killed uh, or uh, Mother Astankia, we'd be able to pick up those legendary lords. So that's why I like using that mod. Um, we're going to go ahead and go down here. Uh, we actually didn't end up taking attrition because the uh, chaos, um, the levels of chaos corruption dropped. So we're going to go ahead and move in against uh, the Norskins and put an end to their filth. It says that we will not do well in this battle. I disagree. I think we'll do just fine. Let's check the... Yeah, it's not even a, a settlement battle. I don't know why. they're. I, it's probably just the numbers. Like, because they have more numbers, so they're predicting high um, casualties. But I, I think we're going to do just fine. All right, the battle's underway. I'm going to use... Um, I was thinking about just doing... I am going to kind of do a charge here with my wing lancers and just bust up their infantry right down the middle. And then also delay their approach. We need to use our ice sheet to slow the approach of the enemy units. Actually, hold off. Okay, we got a good charge. Let's retreat back. Um, I'm using my archers to mow down their um, ranged units that are harassing my flank. Um, I drove off the horsemen on that side. I'm actually going to start moving this ice guard 
the other direction, and then I'm gonna use this ice sheet to help clean this up a little bit. I need to get my wing lancers out of combat. They're getting a little bit beat up here. And we're gonna need to help against those trolls. And the reason I'm swinging some extra infantry, or sorry, my ice guard this way is because we're getting hit hard on this flank. I'm gonna actually do a little bit of work. They're, oh shoot, they're trying to come through with their trolls. Let's give them a charge with the lancers and let's start out flanking over here. Looking good, I think we're doing all right. Um, the cat is doing a good job of helping to control things. I'm gonna slow down their army again, never hurts. All right, the trolls are routing. Getting a good outflank. Um, I'm gonna actually take the ice guard into melee over here and let them use that bonus versus infantry to some good effect. Try and help bust that fight up. And then I'm gonna start targeting these hunters. Our winged lancers are doing a pretty good cleanup job here. I need my cat and Zarina Katarin to see. Oh man, my cat's getting pummeled. Pretty good. Zarina Katarin's likely to get pummeled pretty good if she ends up in that fight too. So I'm gonna send uh, some help her direction. Meanwhile, like I said, we're gonna use the lancers to try and play a bit of a cleanup role here. They've already gotten some pretty good charges in. These units that aren't braced should be. I'm gonna take the out of defensive. Yeah, we're starting to get a lot of kills with our Ice Guard. They should do well against these low armor infantry as they get into combat because they have that bonus versus infantry. Drove them out. We're hitting those hunters. The cat kind of just needs to take it easy for now. Zarina Katarin's not doing great, but she's holding her own. Put a little bit of pain through there with some magic. Nice. All right, we finally got a few kills. Let's pull these guys through. The Ice Guard picked up some good kills there. I don't think it's needed in melee much anymore, so I'm going to pull it back a little bit. Ooh, Zarina Katarin's kind of getting lit up a little bit here, but she's doing very well, all things considered. Ah, my Lancers got stuck in there and got pummeled pretty bad. Shoot, that is not what I wanted. Get out! Like, get out of the fight! Come on! Alright, I'm gonna pull them back there. At least they'll survive and we can use them to fight another day. Let's keep dropping magic here. We have the reserves. Might as well. Swing out here and let's start picking some different targets. Awesome. Okay, so we got a little bit over aggressive with our cavalry, but it did net us 75 kills. We got aggressive with the Ice Guard, though, and that paid off. We've gotten a fair number of kills with them as well. I wonder if we can kill that. Well, it doesn't matter if we kill the Lord because they were in a settlement when we attacked them, so all these troops are going bye-bye when we get back on the other side. All right, nice. Um, we definitely stacked up some kills for Zarina Katarin's sleigh ride here. We gained some devotion because we're beating down chaos-related factions. Um, and then we got some nice rewards off that, too. I like it. We're gonna occupy, so we've gained another settlement here. Um, Fort Yakova and Igorov still need to be captured. Fort Yakova is gonna have walls, um, but it doesn't have much of a garrison yet, so that puts us in a fairly advantageous position. Um, I should honestly probably... The standard Kassars... They do the same bow damage. We should probably... I don't know, they have slightly better attack like in a melee. I'll mix it up a little bit. Let's um let's grab another Kislevite warrior and a Kassar spear. We definitely want to lean on that archery power early on for us. Um if we could get to the Akshina ambushers, that's always a nice go get to. I I'm, they did have armor piercing damage, if I remember right. And I think that got patched out. I didn't actually I haven't gone and read the patch notes yet. But I want to say Akshina ambushers had armor piercing um profile to them previously. Is it the witches right here? Yeah, they used to. Um, I don't know if they're missile strength. I thought they were armor piercing weapon strength and missile strength, and I think that got patched out of them, which sucks. But I mean, they still have a good range and good missile strength. But I mean, I don't know. Actually, the ambushers, I think, may have just gotten kind of nerfed into the dirt um, because I mean, they're, they're cool and the ambush ability is cool. But without at least one of these being armor piercing, I feel like that's too much. Like they, they took way too much. Um, from it. But again, I could be wrong. I, I don't remember that one perfectly. I'll have to go look at the patch notes and see, but it seems like I remember them having armor piercing because I knew that they were really good against like dwarves and stuff like that. 
Um, but I, I'm pretty sure they took away that armor piercing damage profile, which, like I said, is unfortunate. And I think an over nerf uh, by CA if they did it. I mean, to take it away from maybe not giving them armor piercing weapon damage, I guess would be okay. But like the missile, like I said, one or the other would have been nice. Like it would have been nice to have one or the other. I don't think taking away both, if they had both, um, was in the realm of appropriate. Um, I'm going to do this reassuring presence because if we do end up in attrition position, we don't want to let it wreck us too bad. Um, I think we're just ready to end our turn here. Uh, we we'll probably want to make friends with these uh, Empire sub-factions, or sorry, these Empire, what do you call it? Um, these different uh, counties, electric counts, I don't know, whatever they called it. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but we'll want to make friends with them. So we'll take a look at the diplomacy screen. I should have actually done that right there and see if we have any quick deals that are easy and make sense. Let's actually go do that real quick. We get a 2,000 and a crown of command if we gain 50 supporters in the orthodoxy. Okay. Do we do the whole orthodoxy thing here? That amends. Yeah, 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 here. So, um... How'd they already get six? And why don't I have any? Sway the population. We have to use. Supporters generated when occupying a settlement. Constructing a building. When fighting a battle. So probably tour. I probably should have invoked that already. But that also takes my devotion down dangerously low as well. I'm just, I'm not going to worry about it at the moment. We'll, we'll get there. Um, we'll fight that fight when the time comes. We were able to recruit some more units. Um, no. Honestly, they don't really have much of a garrison here. Refuse. And if we just go get them now before they can do more, we can pin down Fort Yakova. We're going to have to worry about these green skins, but there is a gold mine up in those hills as well. Um, and the gold mine is always nice. Let's... Yes. Kind of continue the siege there and see if we can keep the pressure on these filthy Norskins. Um, this building's going to be unnecessary. We want that one because we've been doing some recruiting from it, but I think we get basically the same recruiting. Well, we get the spears available. I would really need growth probably on both of these. So I'm going to go ahead and tear those down because we don't have to have that little extra unit of recruitment. All right, our enemies are sallying out against us at Fort Yakova, which is good. Uh, we can just get them killed right. I've got the battle underway. I'm gonna scoot up and occupy a choke point here. There's some rock formations on my left flank and there'll be rock formations on my right flank. And it looks like because they attacked, obviously the Norskins have to come to me. So you can see them crossing the battlefield here. And like I said, I should get myself in a very secure uh, choke point kind of in fact, I'm going to back up just a hair like that and let them come up here so I get a good, clean gun line on them as soon as they crest that hill. And they'll have to, to choke down into that uh, that spot. So let's actually watch this as it comes to fruition. Should we? Oh, yeah, you can see the ice guard opening fire. And then here comes the pistol fire shortly. If they get up over the crest of that hill, then they're going to get a face full lead from my, uh, my Kassars, armored Kassars. This is good, too, because it'll make it relatively easy to control my flank. Let's make sure we're not getting outflanked, by the way. Not yet. There's the Norskin general. Yeah, there's the face full of pistol fire that we're looking for. Gotta love that good old Kislev dose of lead prior to combat. I know I love it. All right, I'm going to back up Zarina Katarin just a little bit because she got a little cooked in that last fight. I should have used this slowdown thing here, too. I'm going to take my archers and focus down that... Um, I'm going to focus down that unit of berserkers, because they are, they are quite dangerous to me. We are holding really well up front. And I'm going to use Zarina Katarin maybe to weaken these guys. I don't want to go up against that chieftain. Okay, we got rid of the berserkers. I'm going to focus uh, actually out here now against the ranged units while I work to surround. Uh, let's actually move these guys. I'm going to turn and let the pistols do their work at point-blank range here against that flank. Then I'm going to move all the way around 
pressure a little further away, but see, like, right here, I can just start unloading point-blank pistol fire. Always a good choice with Kislev. Um, do like that again and kind of clear that out once and for all. There we go. They're toast. So this fight has gone very well for me. I've kind of just rested the cat and the winged hussars here for obvious reasons, which was they got a little bit lit up in previous battles. I'm going to do something fun here. I'm going to actually take my ice guard after the Norskin commander. I actually think they'll perform okay because of their anti-infantry. I'm going to take them out of a defensive stance and try and go light this guy up. I am really liking these Kislevite warriors. That is such a nice add to the roster here early in the game. Oh man, that, that chieftain didn't even get a chance to fight the ice guard here, unfortunately. I was thinking we would probably do well against him, but... Are we taking any chunks out of him as he routes? I know the routing damage is pretty poor most of the time. Yeah, we're good. All right, well, that turned out well for us. We might want to pick up some extra devotion because we're going to need to use it to gain supporters. I like the treasury and the replenishment, but uh, let's just take the devotion for now. Fort Yakova will be ours for the taking here. It wants to kill off my winged hussars. Like, I mean, this kind of stuff from the auto resolve is absolutely infuriating. I have to manually control this battle or lose my winged hussar unit. How stupid. Like, I mean, it's so. Ugh. All right, well, I don't want you all to have to see your time wasted with this because it is a waste of time. Um, so I'm going to take care of this and then I will see you here in just a moment. Well, I guess I figured I would get you a few close-up shots at least of Norskins being murdered. This is a Kislevite settlement, obviously, you can see from the, the style of it. So we're gonna make them pay for having tried to occupy what is rightfully ours. So I'm going to use my archers and then I've got a ram moving up. Um, Again, this battle's somewhat pointless, but at least we get to witness the uh, death of many Norskins. Let's see how effective we're... We're actually being fairly effective with our archery fire. I brought my ice guards in last and kind of behind my main line because I'm hoping to dissuade the tower fire um, from just everything targeting my ice guard and, you know, hurting that unit. And as far as, like, my units getting killed, it's, it's honestly stupid because, like, this map, for instance, gives me a nice little safe space right over here where those towers can't touch any of my stuff and so the idea that like I'm going to lose my my Lancers somehow like is just stupid and that kind of stuff from the auto resolve shenaniganry needs to quit so definitely a CA please maybe I need to like <clears throat> I wonder if anybody could make it for me but like I need to get like some kind of little like cool animated CA please counter that I can stick up in the corner during a campaign episode and we, you know it like counts up every time we have a CA please moment <laughs> that could be kind of a fun Kind of a fun thing. But I guess I will say, as far as CA Please moments go, CA Please um, keep putting crap loads of content into the DLC like we did here. That's, that's definitely also a CA Please moment, just a different type of CA Please. I'm going to fast forward here for a minute. But yeah, you can see at this point, I mean, the Norskins have no chance here. They can't stop me from just bombarding the ever-loving snot out of them. Um, did we really destroy the gate that quickly? That was very impressive, in fact. Okay. All right, well, we're, uh, they have given up the walls at this point because they can't stand there and just get peppered with archer fire. So I'm going to move up and continue to pepper them with archer fire. I've got my units moving up again. I'm going to keep the damaged units back. Okay, they are bringing some units back up on the walls that we'll have to drive back down here. But I've got my archers moving up into a good position to do so. But those hunters could cause me some damage. So we'll definitely let our archers take care of them. They have, uh, I believe they have armor-piercing missiles because they're throwing axes. They do. And it has shield breaker as well, which is not good. Yeah, my archers are closer now, and they're actually going to do less damage to some of these units on the wall, so that's that's not ideal. They had a better arc of fire from their last position for units that were on the wall. I was expecting to have to fire up and over the wall at this point. Right, let's take our Kislevite warriors through the gate. And, all right, yeah, we got some good work going on in the stuff on the walls. I'm going to go ahead and climb one unit up over the walls. Go with 
All right, our Kislevite warriors are working on capturing the gatehouse. Not that it really matters. The queen marches. Let's bring some of these units up. And kiss the bite warriors. We're gonna go ahead and engage the Marauder Chieftain. Try and do a little bit of damage to these guys on their way in. It won't be amazing, but whatever little bit we can get done. That armor, just that tiny bit of armor piercing on these kiss the bite warriors is gonna be really helpful to hold off these, these kind of tough heroes. And we're going to take the Corsair Great Weapon in there as well. Help kind of clean up some of this. But yeah, I mean, you can you can see there's really no chance here for the the Norskins. So the, the idea of me losing units in this battle I, is kind of insane, to be honest. I mean, they just did not have what it takes here. All right, looks like we've driven the uh, Norskin leader out, and that is going to be it. All right, well, uh, read it and weep, auto-resolve. It's like my wing lancers didn't take any damage at all. I don't know, it's kind of amazing how that works. It's almost like the I knew. <laughs> I guess, though, if you program the auto-resolve one way or the other, it requires some kind of assumption to be involved, and maybe that ends up being bad regardless of what the assumption is. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to come up with, like, a benefit-of-the-doubt type situation here, but it's, it's frustrating. Um... Buildings for casualty replen. We probably just want to go for growth and control to begin with. And then we'll work on defenses and then economy kind of in that order. Uh, there is <coughs> iron resources that are going to be available to us now, which is great. And we're going to continue to expand the army at this point. Like these, <coughs> these low tier units, uh, low tier as they may be, uh, having more of them though, and especially those Kislevite warriors, that little bit of armor piercing is going to go a long ways, and I keep saying I'm going to do it, but let's actually go into diplomacy this time and not just talk about it. The snow. What? Uh, I can get a quick deal with these guys here. Uh, wait a minute, that's the Rocks Rocksman clan? Hang on, what just happened? Quick deal. The Empire. Oscar Mark. Initiate diplomacy. Greetings there we go. Behalf of the Empire. We'll take a little bit of their Our money Empire off their hands. Yet. The ice <clears throat> calls. One is enough. Uh, the Sornlings want a peace agreement, but obviously we're not giving them that because we've got them on the ropes and we're going to take their last settlement. Um, let's see, Zarina Katarin levels up, so we're going to throw that into Reassuring Presence because we're going to kind of move towards the cheaper army cost so that we can have better troops faster. We have 148 devotion at this point. Um, we do need to gain supporters. I don't have a ton of battles coming up, though, and this would last for 10 turns. Part of me wishes I would have gone ahead and used it, though, because then that would have been two supporters. I would have had supporters already. I mean, we could have had a bunch of supporters already by having... Gaining character rank, occupying settlements, constructing buildings. We are constructing buildings right now, aren't we? We are. Feasibly, we could get some supporters off of that one. It would be... Like, even if we weren't... I don't know, for 10 turns, though. But how many battles am I going to be fighting after this, too? Like, who am I going up against? I don't know yet. So, I... Let's go ahead and... Sorry, wrong screen. I keep clicking the wrong one. Um, let's go ahead and do this one with the buildings. I have multiple buildings coming up. That is going to drop our devotion level, though. But I think we're still good. I don't think we're going to have to worry about chaos incursions yet. And if we do, I guess it's just a chance to fight. And oh my gosh, that green skin army off to our east there. That is going to be a problem. Like, we're going to have to get rid of them post haste. So that's actually where my next fight is. Plus, it's a gold mine. Literally. Um, so I think that once we secure this province... Our next move is going to be immediately into the mountains, because if we don't, I, the Bone Rattlers are going to come after us, and we don't want to get caught off guard by that. So we'll need to finish up our spam army here of archers and Kislevite warriors. And we can't quite reach the enemy here, which is frustrating. Where does our territory end? Right there. I'm going to move up to the edge of my territory. 
and use the opportunity since I can't quite reach it. We just got a better convalescence rate as well. Do a little bit more recruiting. We just got a couple of supporters for building those buildings. And feasibly, I'm going to get some more supporters here. I want to really ramp up the growth in this province. And we can build Kislev up to Tier 2 as a developing city, so that'll be super helpful. And we now have research available. We got Czar Loyalty right. Um, still think that we got Glacial Prism. I only have the single Ice Guard units. So I don't see that being... I think this one, the Hooked Axe Blades, would be the most beneficial. Let's work on that one next, and then we might start working on an Ice Court character for eventually chaos. later. But, I mean, it's not an immediate need for us, I don't think. But, you know, sometimes having a couple of characters in your army is not going to be a bad idea either. Um, but we do have to pay... And we could start leveling that character up, too, even if we move them over to another army. So I guess it would be probably a good idea to go ahead and do... So we'll do that, I think, when this research is over. Go ahead and get a character through the Ice Court, because it does take quite a few turns to push one through. And then once we get that character through the Ice Court, we'll put him in this army, we'll start leveling him up, but we can put them in to assist a Druzina, because I definitely want to get a Druzina Lord and start messing with that. And then we also need to look at our missions and see... Um, let's actually encircle them for just a minute. I'm going to take a look at my objectives. Trading places, engage the enemy... Establish a trade agreement with any faction, build supporters. Uh, usually when we're going to get the Golden Knight or any other legendary hero, like they're either recruitable from a building or like a mission tree. And I'm assuming it's probably a mission tree. But let's take a look. Yeah, I don't see it coming out of any of the buildings. So it's probably going to be a mission tree that pops up once we get to the right level. So we'll have to keep an eye out for that. Um, our growth is already paying off, so we can build up Fort Yakova to Stanitsa. And Unleash let's go ahead Jesus and assault Igorov. Uh, and let's take a look at the battlefield here. Again, the auto resolve thinks we're gonna do poorly. I think otherwise, let's get in here and take care of business. All right, let's get some uh, close-ups on our sweet Kislevite army here. We got our Kassars, armored Kassars, ice catter in there. And then, the, man, I love these ice guard. I just can't get enough of the ice guard. They're such cool units. Streltsy are also some of my favorites. They can be a little tricky to use sometimes, but boy, are they rewarding when it pays off. All right, here comes the Norskins. I need to slow up their advance as best I can right here in the middle of Zarina Katarin real quick, and then we can get some more close-ups. That's going to allow our, our units. In fact, I need to put these guys into a defensive stance real quick as well as these. Okay, there we go. So yeah, that Ice Sheet is such a useful spell. It slows your enemies down, kind of ruins their formation and charges and then allows you to get more shots off and kind of damage them prior to engaging in combat. Um, since we don't have guns with these units, I'm going to actually counter charge that and that. And then I'll give a little bit of a charge from my somewhat depleted horseman. Oh, we got charged over here. Let's actually go help against that. Our Kassar Spears actually don't get a bonus versus those Warhounds because they are not a large entity. Okay, the cavalry charge worked. I'm going to use my cavalry now to go run down those hunters. And our Kislevite warriors held the flank beautifully. And I'm going to bring the cat into here, and I'm going to actually bring my ice guard over here to help go after that Marauder Chieftain, our Lancers swiftly dealt with the Hunters and have gotten really a tremendous number of kills considered how damaged they were coming into this fight. Okay, I had some units run off this direction. Let's pull them on back in. Awesome. Let's take these Lancers and get to work killing off some of these regrouping units. My Ice Guard hasn't even arrived over here yet, and Zarina Katarin and There we go. Slow him down. Oh yeah, we're patting the staff with the Lancers. They've got a lot of kills already, too. They should be pretty good at running down routing units, hitting unbraced low armor units. Like, that's where they're going to be at their best. And, uh, yeah, we'll pad the stats on them a little bit here just for fun. 
All right, good stuff. I'll see you back on the map. All right, well, we've been very successful against Basornly, and that should be the end of their faction. We're going to start earning back some of our devotion here, which is quite nice. Um, and then uh, our next episode, so I think we've accomplished what we needed to for a good first episode. We laid out what it is we're seeking to do in the campaign, kind of some of our fun obje objectives. Its theme is the sleigh ride, right? And you all can help me come up with cool slaying armies. And then um, we're going to um, take our fight into the mountains. So the sleigh ride will without the sleigh, at least for now, be heading into the mountains to take on the Bone Rattlers, which I believe is, uh, what's his name, Azag? Yeah, Azag the Slaughterer. So we're gonna be taking him on in the next episode. Uh, our money is in a decent place. Um, we've got a lot of growth now committed into this province, which is good. I want to grow it very quickly and be able to put up defenses there and also be able to switch over into a little bit of economy and devotion. And speaking of devotion, we should go ahead and build this. Um, I believe it's going to... It'll cost us devotion to upgrade, but this will help us generate supporters in our thing as well. And we could build a couple of those soon um, as we get into it. But anyway, like I said, good first episode. We're seven skill points in for Zarina Catter, and we need 23 to hit the Ice Court Sled. Ice Court Sled, I apologize. Um, leader of Renown, recruitment cost... Um, Kind of like control, and we'll do draft master here. And then that is going to, yeah, we can now get to quartermaster soon, logistician, and renowned and feared. And then that'll give us a really good, fast healing, um, lower cost army. And then eventually we can get our Druzina uh, to help protect the, the places where we cannot be all at the same time as Arena Katarin. But speaking of Arena Katarin, as we end this episode, we get that sweet extra recruitment slot. Um, that we've been needing. I'm going to go ahead and grab two more Kislevite warriors and a Kassar. And that'll leave us nearly at a full stack to head into the mountains, which we are going to need a full stack to head into the mountains against the Bone Rattlers. Uh, we have an Ottoman that's available to us now, and I'm going to put that in Kislev, but we'll want to choose that. Kislev is going to crank out some good income, so this boost on income and growth could be handy. That's just way more effect on growth. Then we've got a 10% effect on income which would also be good. I'm going to throw that 10%. Uh, well, actually, I don't know. This one's kind of a, a little bit of best of both worlds here. We'll throw him in there and let him be a governor at, uh, at Kislev. And I will see you all in the next episode. Air of Carthage, signing out for now.